Hi, welcome to Absolute Cinema. Alien parasites arrive on Earth and invade people's brains, turning them into lethal, human-eating mutants. It's up to young Shinshi to eliminate the infected before they wipe out the entire planet. Today, we will recap the story of Parasite Part 1 from 2014. Some alien parasites fall to Earth and start to spread through the city, invading human bodies through the ear, nose, or mouth. In young Shinsha's room, while he is sleeping, one of the parasites falls from the ceiling and tries to enter through the human's ear. However, as he has headphones on, the little alien decides to enter through his nose. But he ends up waking up the boy who manages to throw him away, thinking it's some normal insect. Shinchi gets up to try to crush it, but the alien FLIs and penetrates his arm. The boy then uses the phone as a tourniquet to try to stop the invader from entering. However, his mother hears the noise and ends up taking the phone off her arm to try to see what is happening, thus allowing the parasite to enter. The next morning, Shinshi feels his arm rather strange but decides to ignore it and go to school as normal. But during class, he is sure that something is really not right when his arm reaches out to pick up a rubber on the floor. Also, during basketball class, he manages to throw an unbelievable shot. After class, Shinshi decides to do some research on the internet about hands moving by themselves. While he is browsing the sights, an eye suddenly appears in his hand. Curious, the boy takes a knife, and while he gathers the courage to open a wound on himself, his hand turns into a weird and defective snake. But soon after, it takes on a slightly more friendly shape, if we can call it that. In this new form, a mouth appears on its hand, and an eye appears on one of its fingers, in addition to the other for fingers transforming into the creature's arms and legs. Frightened, Shinchi asks the alien to give him back his right hand, but the creature reveals that it has devoured all of his cells and that, therefore, he will never have his member back. After staying up all night, scared by his alien hand, Shinshi goes to school where the creature in his right hand asks to call it Meiji, literally right in Japanese. In high school, Meiji asks Shinshi to take him to study at the library, as well as attend fencing and marksmanship classes. In all these things, Meiji manages to develop very quickly. At the same time, the other parasites that have also fallen to Earth begin to invade their host's bodies and eat their brains, taking control of their victims and using them to make their meals of human flesh. As Shinshi is heading home after class, Meiji begins to feel another parasite nearby and wanting to know what it would be like if it had invaded a brain. He forces the boy to get off the bus and guides him to a kind of butcher shop where the guy supposedly is. Upon arriving at the place, Shinshi finds the door locked, but Meiji starts looking around and finds a new entrance that they use to access the place. Inside, Shinji walks slowly until he encounters an extremely bizarre creature with the body of a human and a head shaped like a cauliflower that has just come out of Springfield Lake. To make matters worse, this crazy creature is using its popped popcorn head to eat a person's leftovers. When he sees Shinji, the creature assumes his fully human form and sensing Meiji's presence, believes the boy is also an alien and offers him an arm to eat. But quickly, the parasite realizes that Shinji is still alive and that Meiji only possessed his hand. As soon as the enemy realizes this, Meiji begins to sense an aggressive intention coming from him and orders Shinchi to flee. But the boy is quickly cornered, forcing Meiji to assume a battle stance to protect him. Knowing that if Shinchi loses his life, Meiji will have the same fate, the butcher cuts off his own hand and says that Meiji can stay there so they can both eat the boy's body. But he ends up taking too long to respond, and the man gives up on the partnership, launching an attack that is parried by Miggy at the last second. The butcher then begins a series of attacks with his tentacles, but Meiji ends the fight quickly by turning one of the boy's fingers into a super sharp blade that heads off the other alien. However, their struggle ends up drawing the attention of people on the street who call the police. Shinchi then runs back to his house just before the cops enter the butcher shop. As soon as they start to do the forensics, the detectives discover that that place served as a hiding place for the butcher, who, in fact, was an alien who ate human flesh. But for them, there is still a question, who eliminated the butcher at at school. While the principal makes some announcements, Meiji senses the presence of another parasite nearby and starts looking for him. But that search doesn't take long, as the headmaster announces a new substitute teacher named Tamaya Ryuko. 
Meiji immediately realizes she's another parasite. Ryuko starts walking to her room as she is followed by Shinji. Realizing that the boy is after her, the teacher says he shouldn't be afraid because the only thing she wants is to live like an ordinary human. Furthermore, she argues that if she wanted to eliminate him, Meiji would have already sensed her intention. Ryuko then calls them to talk in a more private place and takes them to another place where she introduces two other parasites. The first of these is Shimada, a student just like Shinchi, and the other is Mr. A, a rather hostile and strange cop who doesn't want to reveal his real name. With everyone introduced, Ryuko says that they want to live normally with humans and that's why they should help each other to stay away from the authorities. Lastly, Ryuko says that she performed a strange experiment on Mr. A, thus finding out that she can get pregnant. This means that she is generating a human being in her womb and wants to carry out more experiments to find out how this is possible, as well as wanting to find out what her purpose is in this world. Finding all this insane, Shinshi refuses to cooperate, but Ryuko responds by saying that if he won't help, he shouldn't try to get in the way in any way, as she is now at school and can eliminate all the students if he and Meiji try to do something. As the trio of parasites leaves, Meiji instantly tells Shinchi to watch out for Mr. A, as he senses strong negative intent coming from him. After the meeting, Shinchi goes to his house, and knowing the dangers that humans are in, asks his mother not to leave the house. But the woman says he is paranoid and that he has been weird since the day of the incident with his arm, starting an argument that ends with Shinji heading to school. After class, the boy is heading home when Meiji senses Mr. A's presence and warns the boy once more about his intentions. But as soon as he finishes talking, the alien policeman appears in front of them, and Meiji asks him to try to run because his enemy has great combat skill. After some time on the run, Shinshi gets tired, and Meiji takes control and confronts Mr. A as to why they are being followed. The man then says that he saw the cuts on the butcher's body at the police station and that he knows they were the ones who eliminated him. From Mr. A's point of view, they are dangerous and must be eliminated. After saying that, the monster shows its true form, and Meiji enters combat mode. As they exchange blows, Shinshi slowly advances towards his opponent until he gets close enough to ram an iron bar through his chest that drains all of Mr. A's blood. It turns out he got too confident that a human wouldn't attack him and didn't protect his body properly. Upon seeing this scene, Shinshi is extremely disgusted and runs home, but he committed the same cliche as always. He did not confirm the death of the enemy. It turns out that while he's still alive, Mr. A has some time to invade the body of anyone who gets close. However, to Shinka's misfortune, his mother was returning from work and hearing the man dying, she decides to help but ends up being possessed. As soon as she gets close to Mr. A in bed, Meiji notices a parasite approaching and wakes Shinchi up to get ready. The boy then takes a knife and waits while Meiji counts the distance between them and the parasite until finally, the alien stops at the door. Seeing that the approaching parasite was actually his mother, Shinshi refuses to believe that she was possessed and fights with Meiji for trying to make him attack. But while the two are arguing absurdly, A reveals that he actually possessed her body. In a state of denial, Shinshi says he loves her and starts to apologize for the argument they had earlier. But as soon as he finishes whining, the parasite uses the woman's body to pierce the boy's heart and leaves alone with Shinshi. Meiji leaves his hand and enters the hole in the boy's chest, placing his cells to replace all the damaged tissue. After hours of unconsciousness, Shinshi finally gets up from the pool of blood and walks to the bathroom to look at the wound in his mirror, which is now fully closed. After these events, Shinshi stopped attending school, and because of that, Satomi, a very close friend, decides to visit him to understand what is happening. But the boy ignores her and runs to Ryuko's room. Upon seeing the boy, the woman immediately talks about the policeman's body found, accusing them of eliminating Mr. A. But Meiji tells him about everything that happened and asks if she knows where he is. Ryuko refuses and says he just disappeared. Meiji then asks why she introduced them if she knew Mr. A could be a problem, and Ryuko replies that it was just another one of her experiments. Furious that his mother lost her life to an experiment, Shinchi pulls out a knife and threatens to attack her. But Ryuko coldly gets up and goes partially into combat mode but gives up on eliminating them when she senses that something in Shinchi has changed. Deciding just to walk away and watch how it develops, still angry, the boy throws his knife towards her, but Ryuko manages to stop the weapon with the strands of her hair and throws it back, almost hitting his face. 
Once at his house, Shinchi vows to avenge his mother and starts walking around the city looking for Mistera once again. But as they are leaving the subway station, Meiji says he feels the presence of several parasites nearby. Following the instructions of the alien in his right hand, Shinchi arrives in the middle of a crowd that is on a political rally, looking at the mayoral candidate and his companions. Meiji immediately realizes that they are the aliens, a complete political party made up of extraterrestrial parasites. At home, Shinchi and Meiji start talking about the parasite's plan to take control of the state. Until the detective in charge of the investigation at the butcher shop pays a visit to talk about the body of the policeman they found nearby. But for some reason, rather suspiciously, they withdraw as soon as the boy says he doesn't know anything. After some time, Shinshi finally goes back to school, and while he is getting the material from the locker, Satomi appears and invites him to dinner. But before he even responds, Shimada appears, and Satomi introduces him as a new student, another one of the aliens, is at school trying trying to live a normal life. Seeing him, Shinshi immediately asks what he is doing there and asks him to leave. But not understanding what is happening, Satomi scolds Shinshi and forces them to greet each other as they shake hands. Shimada taunts Shinshi, who starts using all of his strength and nearly crushes the parasite's hand. As soon as their grimace dispute ends, Shimada goes to Ryuko's room and tells her about the superhuman strength that Shinshi has developed. That is, everything was just a test to see the effects that Midge's cell is having on the boy at his house. Shinichi prepares to go in search of Mistera once again, but Migi stops him, saying that after he used his cells to save him, he can't wake up after he falls asleep. That is, if Migi sleeps in the midst of battle, it will be the end of the boy at the headquarters. Ryuko fights with the other parasites, saying that they are attracting too much attention by bringing several bodies to serve as a meal and that they will soon be discovered. But one of them simply ignores it and says that humans have found a way to identify them. It turns out that when one of them has their hair pulled out, the strand instantly curls up, meaning it's only a matter of time before they are discovered. After class, Satomi renews the invitation to dinner, and with no one to disturb the boy, accepts. So they go to a market to buy the ingredients. As they are leaving the store, Shinichi hears the sound of a car. A small puppy was run over. Shinichi delivers the groceries to Satomi and crosses in front of the cars to get the dog, but as soon as he realizes he's gone, the boy throws his body in the trash in an extremely cold way. Upon seeing what Shinichi has done, Satomi is outraged and asks why he is doing this, to which the boy replies that now that the dog is no longer alive, it is just a bunch of useless meat. Noticing the coldness of the boy she loves, Satomi asks what happened to him and leaves, completely disappointed. Alone, Shinichi Shinichi starts talking to Miggy, who says that those are words he would say. That is, because of the transplanted cells, Shinichi is becoming more and more like an alien, both in personality and physical strength. At school, the principal realizes that Ryuko is pregnant and for some stupid reason decides to fire her. After losing her job, she decides to return to the real Ryuko's parents' house, but the mother quickly realizes that this is not her daughter and starts screaming to call the police, forcing the alien to assume its true form and pierce the heart of the hostess's father, cutting off the mother's head soon after. After her argument with Shinichi, Satomi goes to the painting class where the girls are using Shimada as a model. But out of nowhere, one of the students pulls a hair out of him, which instantly starts to tangle. Seeing this, the girls are terrified and gather in a corner of the room while Shimada calmly counts the amount of victims he will have to do. After finishing his count, the boy assumes his true form and says he will eliminate them quickly so they don't feel pain. But Satomi throws a vial of acid that catches the parasite's face, burning its entire face and corroding its insides. Taking advantage of the fact that he is writhing in pain, the students get up to run. But while he is struggling, Shimada ends up hitting one of the girls who has her body split in half right in Satomi's arms. At that moment, Migi senses Shimada's mortal instinct, and Shinichi hears the girls scream, already imagining what is happening. He starts to run towards them, but ends up arriving too late, and all his colleagues have already been brutally eliminated. Upon seeing his friend's bodies, Shinichi goes into a state of complete shock. As Migi tries to get him to focus, less flustered, Shinichi begins to be filled with hatred and starts looking for Shimada while Ryuko prepares some chemical compound in her laboratory on the top floor. Shimada finds Satomi hiding in one of the closets and decides to knock her down. 
After getting up, the girl even tries to run but is hit in the leg by one of Shimada's tentacles. At that moment, Shinichi finally finds them and takes down the parasite, putting himself between him and Satomi. After getting up, Shimada starts attacking Shinchi and manages to sever his hand, separating him from Meiji. However, they manage to get back together quite easily as Satomi watches everything, and Shimada is left reeling from the acid damage. At that moment, Ryuko appears behind Shimada and says that he is getting in the way of her goals while throwing a kind of mullet off in his direction. Sensing the danger, Shinchi picks up Satomi in his arms and jumps off the top floor, landing softly on the ground as the building explodes behind him. After all the chaos, the police officers arrive at the scene and run straight to the top floor, where they find Shimada still alive. Despite being trained, they are all eliminated with extreme ease. Outside, Meiji communicates to Shinchi that Shimada is still alive and that he is heading to the roof to avenge his friends. The boy goes to the top of the other building and cuts a steel pipe. Meiji then transforms into a bow, and Shinchi uses the iron bar as an arrow to pierce Shimada's heart from an unbelievable distance, just like he saw in target shooting classes. After Shinchi eliminates his enemy, Ryuko appears behind him and tells him that she will disappear to experience motherhood. But before going, she gives him the address where Mr. A is hiding. Upon arriving at the place, Shinchi is seen by the Cursed One, and both begin to walk to a further place to finally fight. But along the way, Miggy says he's getting sleepy and that he'll be sleeping soon. He then, at least, transforms into a blade for Shinchi to use in battle and then ends up falling asleep. Even alone, the boy manages to do well and defend himself from most of the blows. But when Mr. A was about to eliminate him, his mother takes control of half of the body and deflects the tentacle. Knowing that even then his mother can't save herself anymore, Shinchi goes up and ends the fight by ripping off Mr. A's head, finally avenging his mother and letting her go in peace. After the battle, Shinchi goes to visit Satomi in the hospital. While she is unconscious, the boy promises that he will exterminate all the parasites so that no one else suffers like she did because of the aliens. However, while he is talking to Meg, a photographer takes several pictures of the two of them together, thus exposing that he has some connection with the aliens. At the same time, all the candidates of the alien party are elected, including the mayor. That is, they are now part of the government and have full power over human laws. With that, Godou, the leader of the aliens, finally understood why they are there, to exterminate the human race so that the planet can become healthier for everyone. And so ends the first part of Parasite. But what about you? Would you have the courage to face all the aliens? Do you think Shinchi will be able to survive this fight? So, what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below, and if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time!